Hacking is the act of identifying and then exploiting weaknesses in a computer system or network, usually to gain unauthorized access to personal or organizational data. Hacking is not always a malicious activity, but the term has mostly negative connotations due to its association with cybercrime. Hey guys, it's John here from Hacker Joe Channel. Welcome to Hacker Joe Channel. We show you technology like hacking skill, how to hack, how to be hacker, programming language, best website, best things, and amazing things. Make sure subscribe to channel and don't forget to click notification bell. And if you have any concerns, questions, or opinions about this video, just live on the comment down below. So, let's get started. Today, the term hacker is more frequently used to describe someone who discovers and exploits a computer system weakness or vulnerability. Hackers use vulnerabilities to block system access, gather information, or gain access to more computers in a network. This doesn't mean that hackers are all bad guys. In fact, there is an ethical hacking profession known as penetration testing. Ethical hacking is an ethical hacker, also referred to as a white hat hacker is an information security expert who penetrates a computer system, network, application or other computing resource on behalf of its owners, and with their authorization. Organizations call on ethical hackers to uncover potential security vulnerabilities that malicious hackers could exploit. The purpose of ethical hacking is to evaluate the security of and identify vulnerabilities in target systems networks or system infrastructure. The process entails finding and then attempting to exploit vulnerabilities to determine whether unauthorized access or other malicious activities are possible. Now let's look, how does hacking work? So, how do hackers hack? Hackers use a variety of techniques to achieve their aims. Some of the most common methods include The first they do is hacking passwords. Hackers use different ways to obtain passwords. The trial and error method is known as a brute force attack, where hackers try to guess all possible combinations to gain access. Hackers can also use simple algorithms to generate different combinations of letters, numbers and symbols to help them identify password combinations. Another technique is called a dictionary attack a procedure that puts frequently used words into a password field to see if it works. The next they work is social engineering. Social engineering is a manipulation technique designed to exploit human error to gain access to personal information. Using a fake identity and various psychological tricks, hackers can deceive you into disclosing personal or financial information. They may rely on phishing scams, spam emails or instant messages, or even fake websites to achieve this. The next they work is gaining backdoor access. Hackers can create programs to find unprotected paths into network systems and computers. Hackers can gain access through backdoors by infecting a computer or system with a trojan created by the hacker to collect and steal important data without the victim noticing. The next they work is infecting devices with malware. Hackers may infiltrate a user's device to install malware. More likely, they will target potential victims via email, instant messages and websites with downloadable content, or peer-to-peer -peer networks. The next they work is spying on emails. Hackers can create code which allows them to intercept and read emails. Most email programs today use encryption formulas which mean that even if hackers intercept a message, they can't read it. The next they work is logging keystrokes. Some programs allow hackers to track every keystroke a computer user makes, once installed on a victim's computer. The programs record each keystroke, giving the hacker everything they need to infiltrate a system or steal someone's identity. The next they work is creating zombie computers. A zombie computer, or bot, is a computer that a hacker can use to send spam or commit distributed denial of service attacks. After a victim executes a seemingly innocent code, a connection opens between their computer and the hacker's system. The hacker can then secretly control the victim's computer, using it to commit crimes or spread spam. This is just seven they do. I am sure that there are many other techniques that exist, 
but these are just a few that I found to be important. Hackers are always one step ahead in finding new techniques where prevention might not be possible at first. Therefore, you should make sure that you do everything you can to ensure that your account is secure. Now let's look, types of hackers. Hackers are classified according to the intent of their actions. The following list classifies types of hackers according to their intent. The first types of hackers are White Hat Hacker. White Hat Hacker known as Ethical Hackers, a security hacker who gains access to systems with a view to fix the identified weaknesses. They may also perform penetration testing and vulnerability assessments. The next types of hackers are Black Hat Hacker. Black Hat Hackers known as Cracker, a hacker who gains unauthorized access to computer systems for personal gain. The intent is usually to steal corporate data, violate privacy rights, transfer funds from bank accounts, etc. The third types of hackers are Gray Hat Hacker. A hacker who is in between ethical and black hat hackers. He or she breaks into computer systems without authority with a view to identify weaknesses and reveal them to the system owner. The fourth types of hacker are Script Kiddies. Script kiddies have no interest in things as mundane as theft, or, as it turns out, script. They don't tend to develop their own software. Instead they download existing malware development software and watch videos on how to use it. When they're confident, they'll attack. A typical script kitty attack would be a denial of service or distributed denial of service. This basically means they flood an IP address with so much useless traffic that it collapses. Think most retail websites on Black Friday. It causes chaos and prevents anyone else from using the service. The fifth types of hacker are hacktivists. These types of hackers intend to hack government websites. A hacker who use hacking to send social, religious, and political, etc. messages. This is usually done by hijacking websites and leaving the message on the hijacked website. The six types of hackers are Freaker, a hacker who identifies and exploits weaknesses in telephones instead of computers. The last types of hackers are State or Nation-sponsored hackers. Government appoints hackers to gain information about other countries. These types of hackers are known as state or nation-sponsored hackers. They use their knowledge to gain confidential information from other countries to be well prepared for any upcoming danger to their country. The sensitive information aids to be on top of every situation but also to avoid upcoming danger. They report only to their governments. Now let's look, why do people hack? Who are hackers and why do they hack? Motivations for hacking vary. Some of the most common include. The first motivates to do hacking is corporate espionage. Sometimes hackers are motivated to steal trade secrets from competing companies. Industrial espionage is a form of hacking aimed at accessing confidential data or intellectual property to gain a competitive advantage over corporate competitors. The second motivates to do hacking is revenge. Sometimes, hackers are motivated by anger, a desire to get revenge on individuals or organizations which they feel have wronged them in some way. The third motivates to do hacking is money. The biggest motivation is often financial gain. Hackers can make money by stealing your passwords, accessing your bank or credit card details, holding your information to ransom, or selling your data to other hackers or on the dark web. The fourth motivation to do hacking is political espionage. Nation states can use hackers for political purposes. This could include stealing classified data, disrupting elections, accessing government or military documents, or attempting to cause political unrest. The fifth motivation to do hacking is security improvements. Not all hacking is malicious. Some hacking, for example, white hat hacking or penetration testing, is done to test vulnerabilities with the aim of improving security for all users. White hat hacking is therefore considered ethical hacking. The last motivation to do hacking is notoriety. Hackers can be motivated by a sense of achievement, 
that is, breaking the system. Hackers can be competitive, challenging each other and gaining recognition from their exploits. Social media gives them a platform to boast about their activities. If you learn hacking by yourself then you will explore some advanced things that are difficult to teach a non-hacker. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions let me know by the comments section. I will happy to reply to you. And in case you are first time here check some other videos.